Hi everyone, how's it going? It's Scott with Moria here. So I've just come off the back of Christmas and obviously the new year. Uh, so this is my Blu-ray update for the month of December 2016. I guess I will try to update my Blu-rays in terms of videos uh, every four to six weeks. That's what I'm going to aim for. So in total I've got nine. These are kind of a combination of ones I picked up uh, before Christmas and then there's a couple of Christmas presents. And then a few I've got in the new year as well. So it's a bit of a mixture, but most of them, uh, the majority of them are 2016 films, bar four of them. So five 2016 films and four uh, kind of cheeky little pickups. Just before I go into the Blu-rays, uh, I've got a few things that I received over Christmas, uh, which I wanted to show in the video as well. I've got a couple of books, there's a few Funkos, and there's a really sweet Lego set as well that I wanted to show. Okay, the first one, uh, this is a Batman book, which I've just finished uh, yesterday. Uh, I've been a big fan of this series since the first book came out, uh, Volume 1, which is Court of Owls. Uh, this is uh, Snyder's Endgame, Volume 7, and uh, I've also got Volume 8 to read as well, so that's next on the list, including another book I've got. Uh, but this is basically the culmination of the Joker Batman story in this run. Um, yeah, it's just another fantastically written book. The, the story is just brilliant, the art is gorgeous. Uh, I can't really fault it that much. Um, a few volumes in between, like some of the Zero Year stuff, I wasn't a big fan of. The general story arc running throughout, I've been a big fan of. And uh, yeah, that's just another home run in my opinion, so nice one. Next up is uh, another Snyder book, um, another Snyder Batman book. Uh, yeah, I must love Snyder, except for Zack, obviously. Uh, but this is a self-contained story, uh, so I hear. I don't know anything about the story, but two friends recommended it to me and um, uh, a friend of mine actually got it for me as a present uh, so this is The Black Mirror it's by Scott Snyder artwork's not by Greg Capullo it's by a gent called Jock I think uh, yeah Jock I don't know what that means Jock he must be Scottish um, but yeah I've not read anything on the back I'm not spoiling myself anything on there I'm just going to read the book after I've done with Batman Volume 8 and uh, I've got a couple of other books as well to read, but this is definitely on the on the pile. Okay, next one uh, is a, a book which is kind of like uh, a great accompaniment, in my opinion. If you've not seen Rogue One, go and see it. It's fantastic. Definitely the top film of the year for me, uh, but there will be arguments, obviously, with that. I saw this on pre-order months ago, and I had to have it, so I pre-ordered it straight away. And I got it just after um, middle of December, I think. And it is The Art of Rogue One, published by Abrams, who also did The Force Awakens one, which is this one. There's that really cool colour run out there. And uh, both of the books are fantastic, uh, but this one, there's so much detail in this. It's just a really, really cool visual guide. Um, without being the official visual guide uh, in a weird way because there's one of those out um, this just kind of gives you just concepts upon concepts upon um, developmental stages of designs and characters and vehicles and landscapes it's just there's so much in there just it's incredible of how much detail is in the book okay there's some more there some x-wing art uh, there's a shuttle there just it's fantastic there's so much in there and the great thing about these books, is, and with the Force Awakens one as well, is that they have, and I believe with other art books as well, they have these really neat little annotations to them which kind of tells you very briefly about what stage they're in or what the ideas were with the designers, with the, with the, um, with the artists, uh, sort of at that point in time. So you get a kind of like a timeline feel to it because some of the art in the book will give you several images and just start from conceptual ideas um, like costume uh, with in regards to creatures like you know their features and then it kind of gives you what could be the end product or what would have been the end product it's only around the region of 20 uh, British pounds so it's a uh, it's a heavy book as well so it's worth its weight in gold that's a lot of gold I'm gonna hear a collective sigh of disdain when I say that I've got Funkos to show. I'm not a big fan of Funkos. I think I've said that a multitude of times to many people on on videos as well. But I have like a dozen. I just like certain ones. If I like the characters or if I like the film, then I'll get it. I don't understand why people have to have monthly subscriptions to certain companies to get 
20 in a month. I don't get it. It's uh, it's ridiculous. And they're worth nothing, really. You know, they're not collectible as such where they're going to be worth something. They're collectible just to fill space up and just kind of look a bit dumb. I've got three for Christmas to share. Uh, first one, we'll stick with the Rogue One, obviously, because it's a bit more thematic in that sense. We've got Krennic here from Rogue One, played by Ben Mendelsohn, of course. Looking very uh, dashing, debonair. I really did love his design in this film. Very simple, very uh, reminiscent of you know the old Star Wars films. I think it was a great pick for an Imperial officer, without question. He's one of the best actors in the world, this guy. I really love Ben Mendelsohn. It's a side bit there. And the back. Interestingly enough, though, uh, this is like the set you can get, obviously. All the characters you can you can, uh, you can can fit onto the back of a panel. Um, but there's like a character which isn't even in there. This little uh, black R2 droid. He's not even in the film. I did not see him at all. So uh, if anyone spots him, let me know where, because I didn't see it at all after like three viewings. There's a side again there. See his little uh, flash of grey hair. He's stressed under the, uh, the tyrannical regime of the Empire, obviously. So yeah, that's uh, Awesome Krennic, 143 of the set, Darth Vader. Apparently, according to internet, uh, this is the closest design of Darth Vader from A New Hope. Personally, I don't look for all these differences in the design of the character. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to do a copy of it, because it's just a guy in a, in a mask and kind of digital box on his, on his chest. I don't know how they can not get it right. Uh, there is a bit close up. He's got these sort of uh, red lenses now, which is the most obvious thing that people have picked up on in other versions. He doesn't have the red lenses. It's the back with the rest of the uh, the Rogue One figures. So a bit there. Fairly good condition. This box. Um, I do really have an issue with these because the boxes are so like poorly constructed or they're just not handled in the in the best way on couriers or on uh, transit so um, I kind of do refrain from buying them online okay last one is from the pop movies line this is number 81 it is Jeffrey Lebowski aka The Dude this is my favourite film Big Lebowski it's been my favourite film for quite some time um, I absolutely adore it The Dude is just the quintessential slacker character that we all aspire to be in my opinion he's just absolutely fantastic so lovable but such a, a lazy lazy guy as well but um i don't know why it's something really endearing about him kind of like a voice of a generation the dude the design is pretty much spot on you've got the cardigan you've got the the white russian there the sandals the only problem with this and i don't know if it affects all the models all the figures themselves but he has you can tell right there Compare it to the image down the front, he's got auburn hair. So I don't know what happened, maybe some issue with the factory. But yeah, I know these things are kind of just churned out, just like by the by the barrel. Um, the mass production is, is massive on these now, hence the word mass. That's a side there. See a bit of better light there, it's got the sandals and the, the cardi. Right, Russian. I do want to get all of these. This is the only set which I really, really want to complete of the Funko range. Uh, because you've got Donnie and Walter, Jesus and, and Maud in there as well. You know, because it is my favourite film, it kind of warrants it, I think. If anyone has that reason to collect a set of Funkos, if it's your favourite film or your favourite TV show, I think that warrants it. Okay, now for the Lego. Um, this I finished a few days ago. I was going to leave it and just show like the box on a video but I thought nah sod it I've got a few days off I'll smash it out in record time to be fair this was probably the quickest build I've ever done but it is the most tedious and it is a bit of a awkward one here he is it's Krennic's shuttle from Rogue One it really does look great on display the bad thing about it is that you can't display it any way other than that and it doesn't look as boss as it would be like that but there's no arm sort of like buffer or stand there that you can actually prop it on so I might look into finding something that can help it stand that way rather than like that because the, I mean the, the wings are massive so it's a bit uh, it is a bit tedious uh, to build and to display as well the panels all come out the only it's kind of pointless though because there's nothing really going on it's just internal gubbins in there in the front you got a little retracting doorway there a little walkway 
they all fit pretty snug together they don't clip or anything they just slot in to the little corners that's one of the side panels there you can see nothing going on in there at all no space um, and it's the same on the other side the back there just a clarification again just nothing um, so it is really just a model to have it's not a play set it's not um, something you can obviously uh, let the kids build and uh, have them sort of play with it it's really, really just for display purposes only um, and then in here you've got little Ben Mendelssohn there chilling out with his cape no capes something classic like uh Dyna guy. Oh, he had a great look. Oh, the cape and the boots. No capes. The retail price is around £80, I believe, um, which I think is a bit high for this. I think if it was around a £60 mark, it would have been more fairer. Uh, but for the time that it was released, I think £80 is around about what you would have expected. Um, the, the build isn't very complicated. The wings are a bit awkward because obviously you go piece by piece. Um, and everything is kind of fit together with little arms and you've got to make sure everything's clipped in properly uh, so I say yeah quite tedious but at the end result it looks quite boss on the shelf okay now the blu-rays um, as I say yeah I've got nine all together okay first one is uh, JC Chandra's All Is Lost starring Robert Redford a great great tale of uh, survival basically that's all you should need to know Next up, we've got a film which I had never ever seen before, so it was a complete blind buy. Um, but I'm a big fan of Brendan Gleeson, so I picked up Cavalry, and it's a fantastic Irish film. Definitely one of the best uh, British films out there at the moment, um, or at least in recent memory. And there's some great support in this film as well. You've got Dinah Moran, Chris Dowd, uh, who else? Uh, Aidan Gillen as well. So great support, but Brendan Gleeson is particularly fantastic in this. and worth a watch uh, I think it's on Netflix as well next up is basically just a film that I picked up to convert from DVD to Blu-ray which I'm in the slow process of and uh, it's uh, hurting my brain it's the, the Khan Brothers Burn After Reading and I particularly like this film for one reason really and that is uh, the performances uh, particularly from Brad Pitt he has this um, constant light shone on him I think in his career about not being very adaptable um, and in recent years it kind of has waned a bit his, his adaptability as an actor but uh, this particular one here Ben Afterreading's performance is just absolutely amazing he's so funny so magnetic on the screen every single moment he's there you're instantly drawn to him he's very much like a caricature he's a social commentary character really um, and he just does it so well, I think. And every time I watch it, I can't help but laugh. It's just a brilliant film. Next up, Brad Pitt again. Because uh, obviously I'm infatuated with him at the moment. But uh, Fight Club. I don't need to say anything more. It's Fight Club. Okay, so we're into the 2016 films now. Um, this first one is probably the most divisive film of the last year for me. And um, I'll be inclined to agree with several viewpoints on both ends of the spectrum because it really is uh, it's it's a really really odd film but I can't help but agree with people when they complain about it or when they praise it I kind of go yeah I agree with that or yeah I agree with that it's really really odd how this works but uh, yeah if you couldn't guess it's the Neon Demon from Nick Winding Refn and uh, yeah it is it is an odd film uh, I don't really appreciate the, the narrative of the film the story um in a nutshell, it is about um, beauty and how people perceive beauty and how people uh, project their beauty, natural beauty, and all that sort of thing. It's it's uh, it is very um, metaphor heavy, and I use that term very very loosely because this kind of goes beyond metaphors. It, it is very very visual this film, and that's probably why I enjoy it. Is the production. The design, just the, uh, the the camera work, the lighting, it's just absolutely beautiful uh, filmmaking. But the uh, the story, in my opinion, sucks. And that's the only reason why I've got it, is because I just like the, the look of the film. Um, so if you're a big fan of filmmaking in general, um, or you just kind of like Nick Winding Refn's directing style, uh, this is worth a look. But don't feel like you are going to enjoy it 
because um, there's some dodgy bits in this film, really dodgy, and uh, who saw that ending coming? Next up, we've got another pretty divisive film, uh, but I I kind of didn't really like this film uh, on the entire whole, uh, but I want to give it another chance, and also... I like the artwork on the Blu-ray, so it's a pretty stupid reason, pretty shallow reason to buy a Blu-ray, but I just like the artwork on this. It is Ben Whitley's High Rise, uh, and I really do love Ben Whitley's films uh, for the most part. His first three films, I think we've got uh, Down Terrace, Kill List, uh, Sightseers, all fantastic films and definitely worth picking up. Um, Field in England, wasn't too keen on, I think it was a bit too experimental for my liking. This kind of falls in the middle. Uh, it has some good moments, but I need to give it a rewatch, and I need to just kind of see if there's anything in there which warrants uh, like a full recommendation. Uh, but again, I love the cover art, and uh, yeah, and that's the only reason why. It's a shallow reason, but um, this is what marketing's all about, really, isn't it? This one, uh, this next one, is a film I can wholeheartedly recommend. Definitely the thriller of the year, and maybe you can class it in the horror genre as well has some really, really neat horror moments in there. Um, it is packed for the tension. It is uh, Jeremy Saunier's Green Room, starring late Anton Yelchin, of course, who sadly passed away last year, and uh, Sir Patrick Stewart as well. If you've not seen uh, Jeremy Saunier's other film, Blue Ruin, um, that's another great thriller. So well paced, so well pitched. It's what I call a silent thriller. It is just tension built on literally nothing and it's so well done I don't know how he managed it but it's just beautifully done so yeah you can take two things away from this one uh, Jeremy Sonnier likes thrillers and uh, two he likes uh, colours ok and the last film we're at the finish line now uh, this is my top recommendation for Blu-ray pickups if you haven't seen it already go and see it it's on Netflix as well so there's no excuse you can just go and watch it on demand or you can go and get the Blu-ray it is the absolutely fantastic Hunt for the World of People. This is directed by Taika Waititi, who also made uh, What We Do in the Shadows, which is another amazing comedy film, a great documentary slash comedy film. Uh, that's worth checking out. It's on Netflix still, I believe. Physical format, just warranty, go and get it. And also Eagle vs. Shark as well. And he is also in process of directing the new Thor film. So he's kind of branching out into Hollywood territory now. But as a comedic director, he is absolutely sublime. And Sam Neill is great in it. Julian Dennison, the young actor who plays Ricky Baker, is great as well. Don't sing the song. And Jenny is great support cast as well. We've got Reese Darby in there. Taika himself appears as a priest at one part. Um, yeah, just all round great support. Great chemistry between the two leads. And just funny as hell. Okay, so that's it. That's my Blu-ray update for December 2016. And... Christmas haul video, I guess you can call it done. If you've got any recommendations for uh, pickups or watches, uh, if it's on Blu-ray, DVD, VOD services, could be films or television shows or documentaries, uh, interested to know, so leave a comment below. If you haven't already, check out the Filmoria website. I'll leave the link below in the description box and the links to our Facebook and Twitter pages. Really would appreciate a follow on both of those. So many thanks for watching and uh, see you later. Take care.